you think white girls are the most freakiest girls? You ain't never been to Japan. Oh, my fault. <laughs> What's going on, oh, Pookie's Away? Welcome back to another episode of Passport Pookie's Travels. And today, I'm bringing it back, man. I got another story for y'all, man. It take a little bit longer with them stories because most of the time, the best ones come when I'm not thinking about them. If I sit there and try to think of, man, what's some interesting stuff that happened on my travels? I can't come up with nothing. But if you think white girls are the most freakiest girls, you ain't never been to Japan. You, <laughs> you don't watch this. In Japan, there the three big major spots, Rapungi, Shibuya, and Shinjuku. Now, Shinjuku is where I went to go shop. That's where I would go and go get my clothes. Shinjuku had clubs and bars and stuff, but Shinjuku was like the New York of Tokyo. It was kind of rough out there at nighttime. That's where you see all the, the gangster Japanese be at, like the Yakuza and stuff like that. So, Rapungi is where all the black folks went to go party because Rapungi had one of the biggest black clubs and one of the biggest Latina clubs. So, you know, let's be for real. Black and Latina is, is pretty damn close, especially when you're not talking about Spaniard descent, when you're talking about Dominicans, Cubans, uh, Colombians, and stuff like that. So we used to intermingle a lot. As if you watch my older videos, you know, we had a whole gang war, blacks against Dominicans, right? So anyways, and the last place would be Shibuya. And that's where all the white boys went to go party because in Shibuya, they had like all the big techno clubs and that type of music. I know a lot of y'all ain't gonna wanna hear this, but after being in Japan for a while and going back and forth to Tokyo, if you don't live in Tokyo, like if you live in Yakuska or it was another little place right outside Yakuska, Yokohama, damn that quick. So Yokohama was probably a good little short train ride, but man, going back and forth to Tokyo was exhausting. Even if you had a car, if you had a car, they had like 50, 11 damn tolls you had to go through, man. It took longer to take a car than it was to actually take the train. That bullet train to get you there, I think it was about 45 minutes, man. Then once we got there, we would take a nap, wake up, get dressed, pre or pregame some more, and then we would walk up the strip, go get something to eat. It was a Wendy's. We would always stop by Wendy's and you know get baconators because you want to soak use that grease to soak up all the alcohol you're gonna be drinking. And then we'll hit them streets of Rapungi, man. And after doing that so many weekends in a row, in and out, in and out, bro, it gets tiring. That trip gets tiring. People start getting girlfriends and people start falling off. Not everybody want to make that trip every single weekend. So the alternative was inside Yakuska was a place called the Honcho. Hey, Honcho, baby. That place got lit too. Some nights the Honch would be more popping in Tokyo. People would go all the way out to Tokyo and see that Tokyo wouldn't jump and come back to the Honch, bro. That's what I'm saying, like the Honch, because it was where all the foreigners were. It was where all the foreigners, especially when, when, when the big boys was in, when, psh, man, the hunch used to be lit. And I lived right above the hunch, so I could look out my window and see whether the script was jumping or not. Anyways, when the hunch was lit, that's where everybody would be at. When Tokyo was lit, that's where everybody would be at. On the days when people didn't want to go out there, your boys, is they wiped up, everybody got girlfriends, you still the single one and stuff like that. The hunch is your best friend, man. Go out to the hunch. Go to one of the little bars. Because on those off days, I would say like Sundays and stuff like that, people would go to Tony's, which was the bar where all the married Filipinos would go to go hook up with contractors and sailors. Or people would go to this reggae spot. So as I mentioned in all my other videos, there's a lot of Africans and a lot of Caribbeans over there in Japan. And, you know, there's a few reggae bars that do get a little love on certain days. But most of the time... Men, we go to the club to find women. Women go to the club for validation. I know they say, oh, no, I want to go dance with my friends. I want to go have fun, blah, 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 blah. But let's be for real, dog. You know what I mean? So if the women ain't there, then the men ain't there. So the club going to be dead. So the hunch was just one of those spots, man. It's hit or miss. All right, so this specific night, the streets was dry, man. And I was going to do what we call hunch hopping. S essentially, you go to the hunch. It's a strip of bars and clubs, man. You go in there. You sit down, see what come in, see what go out. Uh, and nothing moving. Then you go to the next spot. You go to the next spot. You go to the next spot. So the reggae spot was like almost towards the end of the hunch. The hunch was just a long street. It was a long street, man. And pretty much, you know, you just go from spot to spot to spot. And... Once you get to one end, that's the end, and you come back the other way. I was like almost midway through, and that's where the Jamaican spot was. 
So I get to the Jamaican spot and I walk up in there and just like every place else, man, it was dead. But I saw something in there that you don't typically see in Japan. I saw a damn unicorn. And let me get into you about what a unicorn is. If you watch any of my older videos, I used to tell you, bro, man, or I told you that, man, I used to be craving the body of a black woman so bad, bro. Like, cause Japanese women are very, very tiny, man. They're, they're usually, you know, if you do find one that got a body, I'm telling you, she done been ran through by a bunch of black dudes or she in route to doing that, or she's hard to get. She's, hard, she's wiped up by one black dude because Japanese men don't personally go for that. They're like the white men of the 90s. They like that skinny, you know, pale skin, skinny frame with super big titties. If you watch, you know, or look at any Japanese anime that, you know, what they call it, um, the little mangas or the little hint, you know, the Japanese, that, that freaky, them freaky little books they be reading, the chick's always super busty. You know, she always busty and giggling and stuff. You see what I'm saying? So that's how the Japanese chicks be looking in real life, man. So if you find one that got some ass on her too, most Japanese dudes won't touch her. So guess what she come? You know who gonna touch her? But we gonna touch that ass, you feel me? Anyways, I go into the Jamaican bar and I see a unicorn, which is that she was thick from head to toe, but the only issue was she was tall. So she was about my height, which ain't common in Japan. That's why I said she was a unicorn. Now, when I see her, she see me, ain't no, ain't nobody out there like that. So I knew it, it, it was gonna be easy pickings. It was gonna be slim pickings. I know the Japanese dudes I ain't checking for. The streets is empty right now. So she coming home, bro. And most of the time what Japanese girls would do because they would live so far, they would travel to get there. They was gonna stay the night. That's why I told you their, their stories that I got where we had to pretend to go to work so we can get them out the crib because they be trying to stay. No, I stay here till you get back. No, it's okay. I, 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 I can't, I don't want to go home, you know, because they live so far. So usually they'll try to stay the night and then some of them don't want to go home in general. If y'all want to hear about that, just drop it down in the comments below. But this specific night, man, I knew she was coming to the crib. So all I had to do was do a little bit of talking, maybe buy a little drink or something, and then we was good to go. Now on approaching this chick, I knew she had, had like a little bit too much to drink. I, I wouldn't say she was had too much to drink, but like I could tell she had been drinking because she was talking real super close to my face and stuff like that. I'm not a big person to have like somebody right up in my grill, bro. So, you know, she talking and she's, you know, speaking her English. She's saying, why you here? Nobody here tonight. You know what I'm saying? Nobody here tonight, stuff like that. I'm just like, man, look, I mean, I got a boy with nothing else to do, man. Most of my homies was wiped up and then all the shit I had, you know, I was trying to get my bite rug. That's what we call it. Hey, man, I'm about to go get my bite rug, you know, show you, you know, that's how you started off. You want a massage? You want to give me a massage? You know what I'm saying? She's like, why you here? You know, we small talking, we chopping it up. And I'm like, shoot, sure, man, you going to stay in here all night? And she said, no, I come with you. And like, you know, I'm like, well, shit, you ain't had no other options. Don't make it seem like like you ain't had, like you had choices. Fuck right with you. You knew you was coming. But ain't nobody else in here unless you're going home with Shinjuku over here. And he, he don't want you, you know that. So I'm like, well, shit, like you choosing. <laughs> That's why you big ass up in here now. By yourself. Dancing to a slow song. Like Tyler Perry. But no, nah, I'm just saying, she wasn't that bad, man. But she was she was built like a volleyball player, bro. You know how they stay, they be taller and then they, you know, their bodies be curvy, but it be super tight and compact, right? So I had, man, I had thank God, but this was a blessing, bro, because, man, them little Japanese chicks was hurting me, bro. They, they so tiny, bro. You feel their bones. Man, it's like, it's like fucking one of them little chicken wing flats that you get from the Chinese restaurant, bro. I'm telling you, bro. And they, and boy, they be, I, they, if you, Look, I don't want to make this disclaimer. Man. I'm not trying to make this into no freaky porn sex story, but I, I got to give you the details so you can understand the situation, man. But man, you get off in one of them and they, they sound just like in the movies. If you ever had a fetish or you ever watched one of the films, you know, on the hub, you know, Japanese girl, they, 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 the little squeaky joke, they just like that, bro. It, it's no cap. It's it, it is what it is, man. So that's really why I went so crazy when I got that black shit, man. I missed that recoil, man. I missed the percussions in that mud. I missed the, I missed them chicola bicolas, man. That 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 brown round. You want to that brown that brown round? 
miss you know what I'm saying? I was, man, we were fading. That's why when I when I when I got the chance, but I know I'm going off topic, but we do this. This is Pookie Land. We we do this, all right? Pookie World, all right? Man, that's why when I got a hold of that black shit, I know she was married. Father, forgive me if I had sin. But them damn yams on Christmas Eve, man. Boy, I I was fiend that she had me want to quit my job and run away with her. Run away. Hey, <laughs> what was that ludicrous song? Run away, love. Run away, love. Hey, man, that's what I'm telling you, bro. Ain't nothing like the love of a black woman, girl. Had me, had me out of tripping, bro. You got me so hypnotized. The way your body moving round and round. And it was the opposite. The, the, the black chick that the black chick that I had the little situation she she, she was flat chested, but she boy she had the dumb 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 truck with the flat stomach, boy. See, look, see what y'all do to me, black woman. Need some damn water. But anyways, so man, so I'm like, man, thumbs up, bro, thumbs up. So like I told y'all a hundred times, I lived right above the party street, the honcho. So I'm like, man, sure, man. I grabbed me another true high because I knew she was gonna want to drink because man, they want to come to your crib. They don't be having no. They come out the. I don't understand how females be surviving, bro. They come out there with no bread, be drunk as hell when they leave and and fed. I'm like, man, let a nigga go to the club with no bread. They gonna kick your ass about it. <laughs> you know how Japanese people. No, not you, broke ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Kick your ass right about the club, man. But anyways, yeah. So I'm like, man, we go to the store because the Seven Eleven be like 24 hours, man, because it's a safe country. Only only places that got stores that closed earlier, dangerous places. Let's be for real. So we uh, we go to the Seven Eleven, grab a cup of Chu Highs. They basically like the the Japanese version of a Four Loco. So we grab a couple of those. We head back to the crib, man, and we get in the room. So. I already told you this with this, the story with the chick who was missing her leg. I don't never stop in the living room because, man, you know what we came to do. You do know what we came to do. Mm -hmm. like we ain't, ain't you no know, we needing to turn the lights on. Ain't no stopping in the living room to see the crib. It ain't no stopping to the bathroom. Scrape back to the room. I don't want nobody. Nobody don't need to see you. She wasn't busted or nothing. She was a good looking Japanese girl, pretty much. I just didn't, you know, I don't like. <sighs> I told you I had a roommate that was a female and she was my home girl. You know, she's like my sister. We still talk to this day and stuff like that. And then it was just like, I, you know, when when she hang out with the other girls that, you know, like that we work with. So it might just slip out that I always got somebody over there. So you got to, you got to be careful sometimes. She my, she my dog and she got my back. I had her, but you still got to be careful. Like, uh-uh, Pookie had somebody over there last night. And he know he's still fucking with old girl. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I was messing with one of the homies at the time. So anyways, no lights, come on, let's go straight to the back. You know, they want to stop and look around. Hey, this way, man, come on, man. Come on, doing too much. So we get back to the bedroom. We sit down in there. I cut the little lamp on, because if I cut the main light on, it's going to kill the vibe. Cut the little lamp on, man, we sitting down on the bed. Ain't no chairs in there, ain't no TV, ain't nothing. Because that's what that's what time it is in there. You don't come in there, we ain't having no combos or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just joking. But now, nah, she come in there, we sit down on the bed, we still drinking. And I got a bottle of... Hennessy, you know, by the bed because that's, you know, that's the reserves. You know, we keep that regular alcohol that everybody can have in the kitchen. And you keep your special bottle in your room, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody got their own, you know. So she was like, oh, Hennessy. And I'm like, I told you, bro, they love it when we stereotype. They they want to drink the stuff we drink. They want to wear the clothes we wear. They want to talk how we talk. So when we get in the back room, she ain't want them chew highs no more. She wanted that hand out. And I said, Hennessy, bro. I'm like, damn, I can't hit them if they had done drank too much, bro. I'm not talking about even sloppy, bro. Like, if if I feel like it could be any situation where I feel like, you know, she may be able to say, like, she was taken advantage of, I don't even, I don't even risk it because I've seen too many people lose their careers, man, lose everything they had over a chick who just was embarrassed that he, he ran his mouth and people find out she was embarrassed. I seen it, cuz. So I was like trying to, I, I avoided them situations at all costs. And I said, man, now nah, you already had too much. At least the Chew Highs, it was more of a fruity drink. It wasn't really, it wasn't as strong as the Four Loco. You see what I'm saying? And Japanese people, they drink. You know, Asians should be drinking. So I was like, nah, man, I don't want you to drink too much and stuff like that. And she was like, let me have a drink. I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm big girl. I'm big girl. I'm like, man, I'm like, damn, bro. Y'all always doing too damn much, man. So I ain't want to bring your big ass home in the first place. But I'm desperate. Damn. So I go get a cup out of the kitchen. I'm like, man, and I said, don't spill that shit on my bed, bro. 
Lord behold, as soon as the thing hit her hand, she dropped it on the bed. And I had one of them temper the little soft joints, the little memory phone. I don't want to temper it, but it was a memory phone, bro. It was, it was, it was brand new. And I, you know, if it's, if you keep it clean and stuff like that, you can, you can get rid, you know, you can sell it on the, they used to have like a Facebook marketplace out there and you can sell it on there and stuff like that. Cause that joint was expensive, bro. Or at least I could pack it out when I leave and get it shipped with me. I ain't want no stains on it. You know, I was, I'm, I'm a pretty clean dude, bro. So I don't like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like OCD, bro. I like to be in a clean environment, bro. And so I took it and she was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And this is when it gets freaky. She said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, nah, bro. Like, damn. She was like, yeah, let me help you. Cause I went and got some t uh, paper towels to come dry this shit up. Cause it was hand and coke. So it was brown. And I got this white fucking, um, Memory phone mattress, bro. So I'm hot. I'm like, bro, I'm about to send that bed home. Huh? And she was like, no, let me help you. Let me help you. I'm so sorry. And I sit down on the bed while she get it up. And then she doing it. Because, like, man, Japanese chicks, they real. They show a lot of emotion with their face. So she was like. <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was like, I make you feel better. And I'm like, make me feel better. How, bro? And I'm still. And then when she said that, it was like, blink. The little light bulb hit above my head. And it was like, blink. And I was, I knew what she was talking about, but then I was like, you know, I had to still play, man. I'm like, hey, <laughs> you know how you, you try to act like you, man, man, damn, how you gonna make it better? How you gonna make it better? She's like, come here, come here. And then she started, you know, kissing on my neck and shit. I'm like, okay, she about to make it better. She was like, I'll do this for you. So this is where stuff get weird, bro. This is where stuff get weird. So she go down there, man, and she start, you know, kissing on me. Cause I, I stay shirtless, bro. Cause I worked out a lot, bro. I was doing two days. I was meaty. I'm, I was doing the abs. I was in the core and stuff. Man, I was, I was, I was gripped. I'm butt ass naked. I don't typically get butt ass naked, but I'm, I'm butt booty naked. And it, I just feel weird because once, you know, once I done, you know, once I done let loose, man, you know, I done let that thing off. I done, you know, shot the club up or whatever I done did, bro. I, you know, I be wanting to just lay there for a second. I don't like laying with my booty out, bro. Like, it just feel, I don't know, just don't feel masculine. It feel weird. You know, just butt-ass naked looking crazy, you know, with some socks on. Because she insisted that I pull my damn underwear off. So I'm like, man, what the hell? And she just going to town, going to town. Now, mind you, I told you earlier in the story, this chick is my height. She's my height, and she, I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that I was muscular, she would we probably weighed the same damn amount, bro. She probably, we probably weighed the same. She got the meat in this hand. I don't want to do the hand gestures myself, man, but, you know, she, 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 she banging that thing, and she, she, she bobbing forever. Man, she puts my leg, or my grammy by the thigh, wrapped rap by my booty cheek, shove my leg for it, and sticks her tongue in my goddamn ass, man. Man, I must have got that. You know how in them videos you see like the horse kick backwards? Cause I'm laying on my back. So my, I, I ain't got no pants on, so I'm gonna lift my leg up and show you. But man, I must have mother, I must have motherfucking kicked her in the head. Like I ain't kicking the head, but it was kind of like my thigh hit in the head. And she was like, what? No, let me, you will love it. I'm like, and I know that that impersonation sound kind of Mexican or uh, Latino, but, but I, it, stay with me. She says I would love it, and she. I'm like, I said no, bro. I don't. I don't play like that. That because that's not the first time. That's not the first time, bro. I had another chick ask me about that, and I said no, I'm not into it. And she was like, No, most guys love it. And I said, No, you must be messing with them white boys and stuff like that. And she said, No, black guys love it too. I said, Man, what black guys you been messing with? But I had to, I had to, what they call that? Clutch my pearls. Literally, clutch my pearls, man. And I got hair down there, bro. I'm like, man, you might get a... I ain't trying to be nasty, but you want to get a damn... <laughs> get something in your mouth, man. I'm like, man, what you... I was like, bro, what? Yeah, bro. She, she, she got me because I... She got... When she got to the Gucci, it, it, it was still feeling good. So I didn't stop her. You know what I'm saying? But when she got to the, the booty hole and the what up top, I said, man, what the fuck? Man, what's the horse donkey kicked out that motherfucker? Like, what the hell you wrong with you? Oh no, you don't let me. Man, she literally was begging me. She was begging me to do it. And I told I was like, no, I'm not into it. She got mad, bro. She got mad and when it sat on the edge of the bed. And I said, I said, what you doing? I said, so you're not gonna finish? She was like, not unless you let me. I said, no. And I told you she had been drinking, so she was being real forceful with it. And then I said, man, you could just leave, bro. Cause she was literally, she she literally stopped doing everything because I wouldn't let her eat my hand, bro. 
And y'all, I know, I know my stories be outlandish, but it be a hundred percent the truth, bro. And that, like, there's still more to the story, so you know I'm not capping, right? I said, all right, man. I guess I'll call you an Uber or not an Uber. What was it? A taxi. It was a taxi at the time because I don't think they had Ubers in Japan. Like you, you, you would get like a number to like a taxi, like a base taxi, because they had taxis that were permitted to come on base and stuff like that. So you call a base taxi because they usually be in the area. They usually have a taxi ring right next to the, the train stations and stuff like that. So, yeah, so when I, I hit her up a taxi, bro, and she literally wouldn't, did not let me in, bro. She got pissed off because I wouldn't let her eat my ass, bro. So, I'm, I'm pissed off because the experience was just great before that. I get to work the next day. Like, this, this experience was so surreal. And then my roommate, we go to work together and stuff like that. But this time he was, like I told you, I didn't go out with nobody because he was dating this little black chick or whatever. And he was staying at her crib and stuff. She was also married and he was staying at her. I'm telling you, married, man, if you're, if you're in the military and you you married to a military chick or your wife is married to you and you military, bro, they getting piped up. If you don't know it, they getting piped up. But nonetheless, he was staying with her. So we ended up meeting up at work the next day. He was like, man, what you get into last night, man? And I was like, man... I had a crazy ass experience. It was like, what? I was like, man, I had to kick a Japanese chick out last night because I wouldn't let her eat my ass, bro. And he was like, what? I said, man. He was like, nah, why you let her eat your ass? I said, bro, what is wrong with y'all niggas? What is wrong with y'all? What you mean why you let her eat my ass? Nigga, I ain't no freaking head. Pirate? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like pirates get their ass ate. I don't know. But I'm like, bro, I ain't freaking like that. I don't want no tongue in my booty, bro. I barely like kissing, bro. I don't put my, my tongue in my butt. Nigga, you crazy. I don't even like wet wipes like that, man, because they leave me moist afterwards, nigga. But anyway, so he was he was cracking up. He was cracking up. And while we chilling there, because before work, we would chill in the lounge. So during lunch and before work, we would chill in the lounge. We would go in there, eat breakfast, wait before work. You know, kind of like the break room. And in come another group. It, like I told you, everybody ran in clicks. So we worked together, but, you know, everybody had their own little clicks. And in this other clique, it was four guys. It was a white dude named Pimatol. It was a German dude named Genovia. It was a black dude named Petty John. And then a Mexican dude named Melina. And whenever they was in the group, they all hung together. But when they were separate, it would usually be the Mexican and black guy, uh, Petty John and Melina. And then it would usually be Pimentel and Genovia. So they all come in there together and they also laughing while, you know, I, <clears throat> I didn't want to say this out loud because I didn't want them to hear the story or anything. So they they also sharing damn sex stories. So they come into the break or they come into the break room, which is our lounge or whatever. And he was like, yeah, bro. So it's Melina telling the story. He he also had an experience. So he think that's why I didn't want them to hear the story because I know man they 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 were some wild boys, bro. Like you know I told you it's easier for you know white boys to you know be able to get some you know better quality chicks because they white. And Melina even though he was Mexican he looked like a white boy. You know he was he looked more like them than he did us. You see what I'm saying? So it was three technically white boys and then one black dude. And they in there sharing stories and stuff too, which what we did in the break room was just like, you know, if you play football, the stories you share in the locker room. So Melina was telling this story about how his little Japanese girl came over and him and this other dude, the white boy that I told y'all that I used to work with named Dennis, ran a train on one of his Japanese chicks. So they ended up telling the stories. And I was like, bro, you let, I was like, you let Denny, cause we, his name was Dennis, but we called him Denny. Like you let Denny, hit, you let Denny hit your chick? And he was like, yeah, bro, I mean, she's, I mean, she's not really my girl, but bro, you know, you know how they be talking. She's like, he's not really my girl, bro, but you know, yeah, bro, we do it all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? He was like, yeah, bro, she's a freaky little chick. Then he whips out his phone, show, starts showing me videos and talking about how he be, you know, spitting in her mouth. And I'm like, bro, you spitting in her mouth? Like, you spitting in Like, it, it just turned, it, it's crazy how you be paranoid about something. And you know, it just like, you know, when you overthinking some stuff, it ends up, you know, coming out anyways, right? So he's telling me how he's spitting in his chick mouth, and I'm just like, oh my God. I was like, I did not know Japanese girls was getting down like this. He was like, man, my girl fucking loves it, man. She showed me videos and all this stuff. And I'm like, man, you some wild boys, man. And I'm like, man, shit, last night, Japanese chick tried to eat my ass. He was like, yeah, they love that shit, bro. And I'm like, he, the way he said it was like he was saying it from experience. And I said, I said, Bro, you don't let the girl, you don't, you don't have your ass. Hey, he was like, yeah, man. And here come Patty, here come the, <laughs> here come the only other, the only other black dude besides. So it, it's three of them and three of us, but one of them, one of us is with, with them, right? You, you know, he, he wasn't like one of those 
black dudes that act white. He just, you know, because Molina, the dude that he was mostly with, was one of those Mexicans that hung around black. He was from California, so he he had a little flavor to him. You see what I'm saying? So they meshed better or whatever. But you know, PJ, his name is Petty Down, but everybody call him PJ. Um, he ain't had. He was one of those. He ain't had no type like that. So he would do Japanese girls, black girl, white girl, wah 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 wah. So here come Petty John jump in. He was like, bro. You, you know how we get with each other, bro. You ain't let her. I said, hell no, nah, dog. We used to wear coveralls to work, like you know, like mechanics and stuff, cause you be working in these dirty ships and stuff like that. So you wear coveralls so you don't mess up your nice stuff. Man, he lay back on the couch and he pulls his legs back. He was like, bro, I, I hold him back for him. I said, bro, niggas is out here in Japan getting their ass ate. Nigga, just, just take out, nigga. Like I'm like, bro, ain't no, ain't no fucking way, bro. Y'all just out here holding y'all legs back while this chick go to town on your butt. It was like, yeah, man, they love it. And why not, man? It'll change your life. I said, man, look, fuck all y'all. I don't need my life change. I don't want nobody licking in my booty, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like, bro, that's some crazy wild shit, bro. And I'm the whole time they laughing at me like I'm weird. Yeah, but you gotta try. Hey, I'm like what? I said, I did not know Japanese girl was freaky diggy like that, bro. Getting spit in the mouth, getting slapped and all this. Man, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, the first time I ever had an in-depth, in-depth washing was by a Japanese girl, bro. I'm talking about in the, in the shower, man, she came in there with a little stool, sat on the stool, got between my toes, washed my knees, the back of my leg. I'm like, God damn. I did not know, man. So y'all be talking about my wife, bro. bro. Take your head to Japan and get your booty ate. <laughs> Call it a um. What's that? You all ever seen that movie Train to Busan? Uh, what is it? Train to Booty? No, what, what was it? Train to. <laughs> nah, I was joking with y'all. I was joking with y'all. But no, bro. Yeah, I know my stories be outlandish, but they be true, bro. She begged me. She was begging. She was angry. She wouldn't. She wouldn't let me hit. I didn't get a hit. <laughs> you know. You know how bad that sucked. Literally, after getting sucked. You know how bad it sucks after getting sucked, not getting fucked. You know that, bro? She sucked me up in a big hard nigga. Man. I'm telling y'all, bro. You, you want to have some crazy ass experience? Take your ass to Japan, bro. I'm talking about, man. And she tried to manhandle me, man. She forced, she was trying to force me. <laughs> nigga, I had PTSD after that, bro. I had to start, um, not holding auditions. I had to start, um, doing interviews and stuff before I lay down with somebody, bro. I'm like, y'all out here eating booty. That's why I tell y'all, bro. Y'all be out here quick to put your tongue in somebody's mouth. Chicks out here getting spit, spit on and slapped. And man, it could have been me, bro. I ain't never look at Petty John the same after that, bro. Say with a little, little moist booty ass. Walk around here, cheeks, <laughs> cheeks clapping. Hey, you talking about, like, bro, this man laid on his back and held his legs, his kneecaps by his head like this. Talking about, man, I lay back and I just let her go to town. I said, what? Nigga said she do like this. <laughs> man, let me get out of here, man. If you if you rocked with this video, hey, don't be telling nobody. Y'all better stop trying to Google me and stuff, bro. Like, don't tell nobody these stories, bro. Cause this is for real. These people probably got wives and stuff now, man. Telling they out here telling they sex capades, man. Y'all know what to do, man. Hit that thumbs up. Hit the <laughs> hit the subscribe. Join the gang, gang. If you have me. Drop in the comments below, fellas. Fellas, only fellas. Would you let that go down? Ladies, would you do it? Would you do it? I, I I got some I got some ladies in there that be watching the videos. Go ahead, don't be scared. Go ahead and tell Pookie, would you? We got that eating ass. With your free ass. All right, man. It get cold in these streets. Bundle up.